Yo friends, welcome to Next Level Consciousness with Linnea Stella. Today I will share about the strangest psychedelic trip of my life. And I recently shared about the scariest psychedelic experience of my life, which happened just two weeks ago when filming this video. And you can find the link in the description below if you haven't watched that yet. But over to this trip, and it's something very special. It is with a fungi, with a psychedelic that not that many people have experienced in the mainstream at least. I didn't know anyone personally who had joined with this mushroom before. And it is the famous Amanita muscaria, aka fly agaric. Yes, the classic red mushroom with white dots. The one that's related to Santa Claus. And you may think that since Amanita muscaria is a mushroom, it is related to psilocybin mushrooms, which are far more common and also getting legalized all over. I can say that they are very, very different, having tried both of them. The active compounds of Amanita muscaria are ibotenic acid and muscimol. So there are two psychedelic compounds that allow you to go on a journey. Whereas in psilocybin mushrooms, it is mainly psilocybin which acts very differently. And I want to preface this video by saying that it's super important that you prepare the Amanita muscaria in the right way. Because psilocybin you can just eat as is, you can dry it and eat it. But Amanita muscaria, it's very important that you prepare it so that it doesn't get dangerous. But I'm not gonna go into the details, I recommend checking out Amanita Dreamer because she has a lot of great advice on how to prepare it. I also recommend if you have the possibility to sit in a ceremony on the first time, even though I of course don't recommend this to anyone, I want to make that very clear. This is just me once again being a human guinea pig, trying things out, trying anything that can help us expand consciousness. So you can just enjoy my story and think, oh, she's crazy, I would never do that. <laughs> So this experience took place in September this year, 2022, in Switzerland. And we were at this very beautiful spot in nature. It was not really in the highest Alps, it was in the pre-Alps. So you had these green hills and green rolling mountains everywhere. And uh, this was in a beautiful chalet, is that a word in English? <laughs> like a big cabin. But we were outside next to the cabin at a clearing with a fireplace surrounded by these huge ancient trees. So it really felt like the spirits of the trees were surveilling and protecting us during the ceremony. We were about 20 people and uh, the ceremony leader had come in all the way from the United States because she was filming a documentary. They also had a lot of helpers, I would say, which made it feel very safe. Because as you will soon see, this is not for the faint of heart. So around 7 p.m. the ceremony started it was before sunset, but still getting a little darker outside. And the way that we took in the mushroom was two ways. So by smoking it in a bong, so this water pipe, and by drinking it in shots as tea. So we started by just smoking it and I was a little nervous. I was like, hey, it's a new, I have never tried this before. Of course you are a bit, you have respect for these compounds, for these plant and fungi teachers, which is what it really is. And uh, I smoked and then we passed it around. And, and what made the experience even better was that I was sitting next to a Norwegian couple. And Swedes just love Norwegians. They just make everything more fun. <laughs> so I was sharing my water pipe with the Norwegians. And after each inhale, I was like, do I feel it? Do I feel it? You know, when you almost start to force the experience to happen. But I just felt slightly more relaxed, maybe a little lightheaded, but no big effects. And then we started to drum, because that was the big thing with the ceremony. So we all had drums like this. And we started to drum together in a circle to help each other to work through blocks and to release anything that we didn't need anymore. It's very powerful to do drumming circles. And it's something that people have done, that humans have done for centuries, for millennia. It's a very ancient form of healing to gather together in a drum circle to help each other heal because it's literally shaking out all the low vibrations from your system so it was really powerful and it was i didn't know anyone there but it created such a sense of community to be there together and drum and we got instructed that in each in the break between each song we could go and get a shot of the tea which according to me had a much stronger effect than smoking 
And they told us that, okay, you feel what is good for you, but start with one glass and then you wait the whole song and you see if you have any effects and then you decide if you want to keep going. So that was the structure of the ceremony. So I started with one glass and it tasted really good. And I remember because at the time I was still vegan and I remember thinking, wow, you really don't need any animal product. This really, it felt meaty and it had a different taste from any other mushroom that I've ever tried. So it's actually really delicious. And it was this orange slur, almost looked a little like ayahuasca and had the same consistency, but it was really tasty. So I finished one glass and we kept on drumming. feel anything and yeah I started to feel something shifted but it was very subtle but I was very much in a state of surrendering and I told myself if I don't get any huge effects I am still happy because it's such a beautiful mm. it's such a beautiful experience just to be here with all the people in nature without any phones just being completely present drumming together it was so healing in itself and if i like any psychedelic effects it would just be a welcome bonus but that wasn't the whole point i felt and of course when you surrender when you let go of something that's when it comes as we shall see <laughs> so we kept on smoking also and i still didn't feel a huge difference after about 20 minutes or so in the break between two songs i went for a second shot and i just took it all in one go Ah, that was delicious. Okay, let's see. And I got a little, I felt the anticipation, excitement. Okay, what is gonna happen? And if I remember it correctly, because I didn't write everything down, but after the second, I started to feel almost a little drunk, a little tipsy, I would say. Like when you had one or two glasses of wine and you feel like, whoa, okay, something is shifting. And it surprised me a little, because if you know psilocybin, it has nothing to do, at least for me, with being drunk. But here I actually felt a bit drunk, and I was like, oh, this, this is funny. <laughs> and it made me giggly also, it didn't make me anxious at all, it just made me like, oh, this is a funny thing. <laughs> we kept on drumming for the next song, I smoked a little, but I felt like I can still go deeper. Like My intuition is telling me that, yeah, I haven't had too much at least. So I went for the third glass. <laughs> and now things are getting intense. Boom. After the third glass, it didn't take many minutes before I could barely stand up. I felt so tipsy, like so dizzy. <laughs> Almost like I lost control over my body, but still no anxiety at all. I just felt super giggly and found it hilarious, the whole experience. And I noticed people around me starting to be really feeling it also. <laughs> we had a few songs to go and I kept drumming, but it took a lot of effort to keep standing up. So at some point I was just sitting down, sitting down laughing, watching the giant trees and the stars. I was like, whoa, this is very different. And it had barely started, I can tell you. And after the last song, we were told to lay down. And we went on a super cool time travel journey, which is one of the trippiest and coolest experiences of my life, really. And I don't want to spoil anything if you want to go on these ceremonies, but it was so cool and I had no idea that this was just a trip. So basically, when we had been guided through this whole experience, we ended standing up. And at this point, I am really tripping hard. <laughs> on Amanita Muscaria. There were a number of effects that I was feeling, so I'm gonna try to tell them in an order that makes sense. First of all, I was dizzy, as I told you, and I could barely move my body. I felt as if someone was remote controlling me. I really felt as if I was in a simulation, which was very trippy, and once again very different from psilocybin. And I was really aware of my body in a way that I have never been before. But there was really something strange about having a physical body and it took a lot of effort to move it. So that was one effect, the body effect. The second that was super prominent was time. The distortion, the alteration of time. 
And if you have taken any psychedelic, you know what I mean. Maybe also if you have been in deep meditation, in flow, you know the time is not as structured, as sequential, as we often perceive it in day-to-day life. But this kind of time distortion was something completely new. I barely know how to explain it, but time was fractal. Time was fractal. What I mean by this, I had this very, very strange, peculiar effect that twice every second, and I could still count, <laughs> twice every second, I saw a snapshot of my surroundings, a still photo, and then it turned pitch black. And then one time more, pitch black. So if we assume that reality is a simulation, it was as if the simulation had been slowed down, enough for me to perceive the individual frames that constitute what we experience from a baseline state of consciousness as continuous passing of time. It was now slowed down so much that I could perceive every unit of time. And I can't even explain how it felt. But I was like, what? <laughs> and I don't know if this was actually, if there is some deeper truth to this. Or if I was just falling asleep twice every second. <laughs> I don't know, let me know in the comment section if you have tried Amanita Muscaria or if you've experienced a similar effect. I have never experienced this before on any other compound. But really, nothing was moving, everything was static. I saw a photo, it turned black. I saw a photo, it turned black. And if this was really me falling asleep and waking up twice every second, that's kind of a really weird situation still. <laughs> the next very palpable effect, yeah, everything is super peculiar and strange about this experience, <laughs> was that I was convinced that we were in a lucid dream. And at this point in time, the circle was dissolving, opening up, and everyone could start to walk around, just have their own experience. And I should say that a lot of people were having a hard time. They were losing it. I'm not gonna go into detail, but a lot of people were really freaking out. <laughs> and I was just enjoying it. I was just walking around there, laughing, <laughs> observing all the effects. And I was just jumping around as much as I could move my remote controlled body. Telling everyone, we are in a lucid dream! <gasps> we are put in a lucid dream! We are in a lucid dream! We can control everything! <laughs> oh, it was so funny. And somehow I got very social on this. I didn't feel the need to retreat into my own bubble. I definitely didn't feel the need to sit down and close my eyes and meditate. I just wanted to talk to everyone and tell them that, hey, do you realize that we are in a lucid dream? And we, we create our reality. So somehow it was connected to manifesting too. <laughs> and I just stumble around everywhere and tell everyone, we're in a lucid dream, we're in a lucid dream. They're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I felt like I was the one just jumping around like a little rabbit talking to everyone. And I was so obsessed with this idea that we are in a lucid dream. And I was in awe, I was astounded. It was completely magical. <laughs> And I remember having watched a movie a couple of years back that's called Waking Life. It's an animated movie about someone who is in a, wake, a lucid dream, or I don't really remember, but it's something that the way that he tests whether or not he's in a lucid dream is by flipping the switch of a light button. And somehow I remember this movie in the trip and I'm like oh, I need to find a light switch I need to switch it and if the light turns off it means that we're not in a lucid dream but if nothing changes we are in a lucid dream and I so wanted to find that light button but we were outside and by now it was pitch black <laughs> so there were no light buttons and I spoke to a German guy who I ended up spending most of the experience with after and I remember telling him this thing we need to find a light switch we need to flip it we need to see what happens and he said no the way that you check if you are in a dream or not is, can you see your hands? And I looked down. Yeah, I can see my hands. Well, then it's reality, then you're not in a dream. And I was like, oh. <laughs>
So that was kind of a party pooper. So thank you, random German guy, if you're watching this. <laughs> so that took the whole experience down a notch because I was like, I really wanted this to be a lucid dream. But I was still very much in the experience. And I keep running around for a while, talking to everyone. <laughs> Reality is just flicking, turning on and off twice every second, like nothing weird with that. <laughs> I can barely control my body. And time is definitely not what I thought it was. And the visual effects, I should say, very, very different also from classic psychedelics. Everything was a bit blurred. So I normally wear contact lenses and it was as if I didn't have my lenses and I was short-sighted and everything was just like in a fog. But no cool visuals, no things moving. I have heard that on Amanita Muscaria, you can perceive things as bigger or smaller than they usually are. So kind of the Alice in Wonderland effect. But I didn't have that as far as I remember. But I think the main message for me from this trip was really that we create our reality, but in a very different way. They conveyed it in a very different way than psilocybin. And an interesting feature that came with that was that for the majority of the trip, I had this constant stream of nonsense words. It was like... Blah, 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 just like glossolalia, like words speaking in tongues in my head and it kept repeating over and over and over and over. Luckily, I am so experienced so I know, okay, just surrender to it, just let it be there, don't try to fight it. Because I think at this point, if I would have tried to fight it, I would have had a bad experience. I would have felt a lot more anxiety, maybe going into panic, but I just let it be there. And already when I was in the experience, I made an interpretation that this means that I had quite a lot of noise going on mentally that is blocking me from manifesting that which I want to see. Because you know that manifesting works as that you are very clear on what you want. You kind of order it from the spiritual Amazon and the universe delivers. But if I'm like, I want this, that, this, and I'm changing my mind like every two seconds, of course the universe can't deliver. So I think this noise, this mental noise, that was a very prominent characteristic of the experience, was a representation of that. Around midnight I started to feel very tired. So this was maybe two, two and a half hours after the circle had opened up and the ceremony was finished. And I started to feel so sleepy and I remember having heard that this is a dream mushroom. So usually a lot of the healing effects come from when you sleep and you have very vivid dreams that give you messages. That is an essential part of the experience. So I was a bit excited about that. I was so, so tired. And then one of the facilitators, one of the helpers, he came and told me, do you want to sleep outside by the fire? Because there were a bunch of people sleeping around the fire. And I said, yeah, sounds good. So that was very special also to be there, kind of in a circle with people in a sleeping bag and just these giant trees there watching over us. And as I went to sleep, I was still really trippy, really deep into the experience. I was like, oh, just falling asleep instantly. And my dreams and the climax. I didn't have very strong dreams. I just remember a short part that I was in a cabin in Norway. So maybe that was thanks to my Norwegian neighbors during the ceremony. Maybe because this is a mushroom that is used quite a lot or traditional was used quite a lot in Scandinavia, where I come from. Funny thing, I woke up around maybe 3 a.m. having slept a few hours, completely sober, completely out of the experience, completely grounded. I was back to baseline consciousness and I felt like, okay, it's over. <laughs> everything's good. I woke up early in the morning because the sun came up feeling completely normal, no hangover, no bad after effects, no side effects and then I was traveling during the day to my next destination and the only thing I felt was a lot of gratitude and love in my heart and I was very thankful for the experience, for the beautiful souls that had shared the experience with me but no side effects whatsoever, physically, mentally, emotionally. And I want to stress once again that this is my experience. And I could see that a lot of people were struggling. They were having a very hard experience. This is definitely not a beginner psychedelic. It is something that I don't recommend you doing alone. But if you are interested, as I said in the beginning of the video, do it with someone or in a ceremony. Be sure that you watch Amanita Dreamer's video so that you know how to prepare this mushroom because you can't just take a bite of it. Another interesting thing is that as I was in the trip, I remember thinking this is how K must feel like, you know, the white powder. And I personally haven't tried it, but I remember talking to my new German friend and he was like, yeah, it's very similar actually. And Amanita is actually, correct me if I'm wrong, 
But from what I have found out, it is also a dissociative. So the same class of compounds as K. And at a certain point, I remember feeling like my feet were toast. <laughs> <laughs> like toasted slices of bread and i think i also told someone hey my feet are turned into slices of bread <laughs> so that was my experience with amanita muscaria would i do it again definitely but i would prefer to do it in a ceremony in the more intentional way as people have done it for thousands of years and also together with the drumming because it was such a beautiful experience so thank you for watching and see you tomorrow for the next video